Hi and welcome to Worlds Apart, a program that is committed to speaking the truth in love. I'm your host, Romul Gassain, and today we have with us Daniel Shiesta, who will be discussing with us ideologies that are truly worlds apart. First of all, welcome to the show, Daniel. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you come on again and give us these talks. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Now, what I would like to talk about on this episode specifically is really the person that makes all the difference, and that is Jesus. That's Jesus. Now, we often hear Muslims refer to Jesus as Isa. Now, I was thinking about this and I was wondering, is there a difference between the Isa of the Qur'an and the Jesus of the Bible? Or is it really the one and the same person? There is a difference. There is, there is a fundamental difference. But um, um, as I have said uh, in uh, pre one of the previous episodes, that because Muhammad was going to a Catholic church, he learned a lot from Catholic oral traditions. And therefore, you see the similarities there. But fundamental difference um, is there that fundamental difference really um, makes you to understand that Jesus that uh, the Quran is introducing is not the Jesus that uh, the Bible introduces. Well, what does the Quran tell us about Jesus? Oh, Jesus is a prophet, and um, Jesus uh, did not die, and uh, he's in heaven, but that's a big question mark in front of Islam. Well, if he's in heaven, and Muhammad is not in heaven, then you need to follow the one who is in heaven, or the one who is in heaven um, can uh, take you to heaven, can be a good guide to you. Or uh, Koran doesn't attribute any sin to Jesus, but uh, Muhammad is sinner, he's everywhere sinner. And, uh, and Jesus, um, especially in traditions, introduced that uh, Jesus, Koran says Jesus will come again, to judge the world. He is the mercy of God. And Quran doesn't say that Muhammad is the mercy of God. But Jesus will come in tradition. It's a very angry Jesus. It's a very hostile Jesus. He will come and break the cross. And he will come and kill the pigs. So why would he break the cross? It's just the hatred, really. Um, the leaders of uh, Islam from the beginning established toward the beliefs of uh, um, Christians that Jesus was crucified for the sin of people. He carried the sin of people and, uh, to uh, the cross. And uh, Muhammad, what happened, in the first 13 years he never spoke against cross because he was going to a church. But in the second 10 years that he moved to Medina, and Christians didn't like what he was doing. You know, what he did, his first ministry was to go with the tribe of Khazraj to loot the caravans. And it was shocking to Jews and also the people of Medina. He said, what kind of God is this? He's encouraging you to loot the caravans. The real God doesn't do this. So he started to hate Jews and then eventually Christians criticized him. He hated Christians. What happened after that? He started to use Gnostic Christianity. You know, Gnosticism is a false Christianity that was everywhere. He, Muhammad used those words against the real Christianity. And that was there. He said, no, cross is not the reality or Jesus didn't die. He was taken uh, to heaven. And uh, the whole, you know, episode was changed really, then, then fully became a different Jesus. So does the Quran say that Jesus is a savior? Well, indirectly. It's, 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 the, it's an amazing thing in the Quran really. I said that Muhammad borrowed, he didn't know really he was going to borrow these things and put 
this is going to contradict his first sayings and later saying are going to contradict each other. You see, what he has said about Jesus, it's borrowed from the gospel and it has made really Koran very contradictory. For example, Koran says Jesus is the word of God. Never says Muhammad is the word of God. You know, I said that word of God means God himself in philosophy. When you say that Jesus is the word of God, that means in philosophy, Jesus is God himself. You see in, in Koran chapter 19, exactly the photocopy of Luke chapter 2. Koran chapter 19 says exactly this. The spirit of God went to Mary and that his spirit became a perfect man, a sinless, a holy man. You know, exactly Luke chapter 2. Now the Muslims have put inside the bracket... They say the Spirit of God is Archangel. That, first of all, is changing the Koran. Why are you changing your Koran? Second, the Spirit of God cannot be angel. The Spirit of God, God is God himself. Why? Because the definition for God is God is a Spirit. If you ask who is God, what is God, the, the answer is He is a Spirit. spirit yes. When God says, I send my Spirit, in philosophy means I went myself, because God is everywhere. You know, God, I'm talking to you here, he is here, God is in America, God is in China, one God, he is everywhere, you know. When God says, I send my spirit to Mary, and his spirit became a flesh, a man called Moses, uh, Jesus, sorry, that means God became Jesus. So, in other, Koran is indirectly attributing the deity to Jesus. If he is God, he is Savior. Actually, the Jesus, Isa in Arabic, means Savior. Wow. Isa means Savior. He is Savior. Wow. Isa means Isa, Masi. Masi means the anointed one. He is the anointed one by the Spirit of God. He is the spirit of God himself. He is the word of God. You see, Koran is indirectly saying that Jesus is God. Jesus is Savior. But because the Islamic scholars are narrow-minded, I'm sorry for that, because they do not read any other religion, they do not read any other philosophy to compare them together to understand, and so they do not understand this. But... These are the amazing things that are written in the Quran. The picture Quran is giving really from Jesus is not the true Jesus, but it is shocking even to many Muslims when they compare the Jesus of the Quran with the Muhammad of the Quran, they're shocked. They said, wow, why we are not following, the, following Jesus, following Muhammad? You see, Quran says Jesus in heaven, and he's sinless. Muhammad is sinner, he died. Now one heartbreaking thing actually for Muslims. Quran chapter 19, Surah Al-Maryam, in verses 68 to 72 says, All righteous and unrighteous will be taken to hell first. They will sit around, round around the fire hell. All righteous, that means including Muhammad. So all righteous Muslims with non-righteous one, unrighteous one, they are taken to hell. Isn't that so sad that a Muslim righteous man, yes. he has done everything, everything in his life. He has done his best, but he's taken to the sit hell. round yes. around the hell. That's heartbreaking. Now, According to the Quran, Muhammad is righteous, he died, he is now waiting for the judgment of Allah. But where is Jesus? I'm not He's sure in where. heaven. Wow, really? Now he this is, is according in hell. to the Quran. Absolutely. Wow. Muhammad died, he is sinner, he is in the hell, in the, not actually saying hell, it's around the fire of hell, waiting there. But Jesus in heaven. He is sinless. Why should I follow Muhammad then? Why shouldn't I follow the one who is in heaven? He has tasted the beauty of heaven. 
He is living in light. He is in light. The one who is in light, he can be the way for me to heaven. This is a great contradiction in the Quran. And attributes this, attributes this great things to Jesus, but not to Muhammad. They said to them, read the Quran. Compare the Jesus of the Quran with the Muhammad of the Quran. And they are fascinated what Jesus is, even though that Jesus is not the Jesus of the gospel. And they understand that Jesus is the most powerful one, is the most successful one. When they understand that, they say, well, how about we learn more about Jesus? <laughs> and they come to Christians, they come to us, we want to learn more, we give the gospel to them, and they find the real radiant of Jesus in the gospel, that Jesus is truly the living God, the Spirit of God became man. Because he was the Spirit of God, death could not overcome him, and he rose from the dead, dead and went and sat on the throne of heaven. And he is in control of everything. He is the source of love. He is the healer. He is the miracle giver. He is the giver, giver of life and everything. And they give their heart to the Lord. So this is something that... Um, Muhammad that brought contradiction there, and that contradiction is confusing a lot of Muslims and waking them up, said, well, even according to the Quran, I should not follow Muhammad. Yes, and so what I'm finding here is actually what a Muslim believes is not necessarily what you will find if you actually study the Quran itself. Absolutely, they do not, you know, one of the things that um, some of these uh, clergies and uh, scholars really are confused or are really trapped in that, they do not reveal the real identity of Jesus to people, you know. I mean, they they just in it really. They are chained, chained in that and in their chain, they do not have that ability really to find the real way and also help other people and therefore keep it always you know, uh, in secret. For example, they say that Jesus was not able to finish the job and Muhammad came. Allah sent Muhammad to finish the job. No, if really Muhammad is sinner and Jesus is sinless, how can a sinner finish the job of a sinless? Yes. That doesn't make doesn't sense. Doesn't make sense logically. Yes. That's, not Ill that's not logic. It's yes. illogic. And also, how can God trust the sinner more than the sinless one? Yes. God is perfect in everything. If he wants a job to be done, he gives that to the perfect one. Jesus is perfect. He must finish the job, not the one who is sinner. And this is what really many Islamic scholars are not able to understand that. And they are really in darkness and also... What do you expect them really to teach their followers? Really, they, they teach that darkness. So therefore, they really do not know the real Jesus. Even they do not know the Jesus of the Quran very well. In, you know, they are not able to compare that. And uh, millions of Muslims are just are in darkness without knowing who Jesus is. Does a Muslim believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Absolutely not. I mean, this is... One of the things really, you know, I was going to church and that was, a, that was really an experience for me. You know, after a few weeks I discovered these people were so nice people. My goodness, we call them immoral. I see the real morality among these Christians in the church. Because when you're Muslim, you're always taught that Christians are the most immoral people in the world. And they're horrible. You know, I remember one day that there were two Christian, husband and wife, they were talking to me, and when wife was talking, husband was looking at her face with fascination. I was shocked, really. <laughs> My goodness, his wife is talking and he's listening to his wife? Very odd in Islamic, especially if you're a committed Muslim. So when I saw these people were so nice people, I said, how can these people be nice? 
And I was fascinated, but the word son of God was ugly for me because always my brain yes. was filled that you should not call Jesus the son of God. God cannot have son because whatever Islam is interpreting is the sexual relationship. A son as a result of sexual okay, relationship, yes. which is quite different in the Bible. Bible believes in his spiritual sonhood or is in his spiritual childhood. I didn't know that. So what I was saying, I was praying sometimes to Allah because I was still Muslim. It's not a committed Muslim, mm -hmm. but it's still that culture was in my mind. I was saying, these people are so nice people. Please remove this belief from them because, <laughs> and allow them to become more beautiful. I didn't know they were beautiful because of this belief. <laughs> That's amazing. It's the Son of God is the source of love and beauty and everything. So then gradually I discovered that absolutely the picture Islam is giving from the Son of God absolutely different uh, from, the, from the one in the Bible. The sonhood in the, in, in the Bible means you're the member of God's king, kingdom and all and household, you're the member of that. And the sonhood of Jesus is the revelation of the full nature of God to people. Wow, that's amazing. The revelation of God, the revelation of the spirit of God in flesh is called son, spiritually, the mm -hmm. son of God, you know. Uh, absolutely, it carries a lot of beauty in itself, you know. Um, it has also cultural meaning, you know, if you're the son, if you're the firstborn, you're the most responsible one. You know, in Islamic countries, the same. You see, my, my mother has um, um, eight children. And, uh, you know, the responsibility always fall on the shoulder of the first son, older son, my old son. She is leaving my, you know, younger son. If my younger, sorry, my younger brother, if my younger brother has given a little bit problem to my mother, people are coming and talking to my older brother, saying to him, shame on you, what is happening here? But older brother said, I'm not leaving with her, but they say, shame on you. That's the cultural responsibility yes. of people. And God always uses that culture, you know, interpret that in a, in a religious way for people to understand that because Jesus is the first born from the dead. And that, gospel says, made him the son of the mighty God to show that victory over death, the victory that the death that was disturbing me, that was taking me and you and everybody to hell, to the kingdom of Satan. He victoriously came out of the day, broke the wall of Satan, victoriously, the wall of Satan has a crack, it's broken. If you believe in Jesus, you come out of it. You belong to the kingdom of God. That's wow. called the son of God. Yes. And Muslims do not understand that. Scholars do not understand that. They were not told that. To understand that the spiritual beauty. And how wonderful is it to be able to see that? Is that the God of the Bible wants to have a relationship with the creature that he created. Absolutely. You and see, we understand that it was God who created us in his own image and his own likeness. Absolutely. Yes, we're very different than him, absolutely. but God created us so that we can know him That's, and that we could be with him. And he reveals this to us, how? Through the Son, as you mentioned. And like you said, that is the difference, isn't it, Daniel? Absolutely. The difference is the Son. And how amazing is it that you discovered this in your own life? This very book was really a discovery of your own life that you found that the pinnacle difference of all religions and your own religion that you were very entrenched in was uh, this, Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And you wrote about that. And I would like to encourage people that, I mean, we're going through these things as a summary, a me-summary. 
But if you want to learn about these things, please get yourself a copy of this book. The Difference is the Sun and it's written by Daniel Shiesta, whom we are talking to. So what I would like to find out now specifically is that there'll be people who will be listening to this and they'll be saying, yes, I understand that Jesus is a nice person, but he's still a prophet. What is it that they need to understand or gain to be able to know about the true Jesus? Where can they go? Where should they go, Daniel? Well, you see, let me start from here. People should ask always a question from themselves for everything. Why Jesus is a prophet? What a prophet can do for me? Prophet is just like you and I. They were created from, you know, a father and mother. They're coming from a father and mother, worldly people. They're coming from sinner. Koran says itself also, everybody is sinner. But Jesus has come from the Spirit of God. It's an exceptional, you know, existence, has come into existence. And that's why they, they need to ask them some question. Well, Muhammad is a prophet. What kind of help he has done to me, really? You know, the great help, spiritual help, is this. You need to ask yourself, is Muhammad able to provide salvation for me? He's a prophet. Say, he is the seal of all prophets. In other words, he's fantastic. He's greater than everybody. Well, he is greater than everybody. Is he able to provide salvation for you? No. He himself died in the uncertainty. The Jesus of the Quran is such a person. He is only a prophet. He cannot provide salvation for others. So he is not any difference you know, from Muhammad, Moses, others. Then, then what's the point? I am in chain. Well, Asri Nelinsan Alefikos in Arabic said, All humans are in loss. They are in darkness. They are in the kingdom of darkness. You're chained. You're crying. You want to, to be released, to be freed now. What kind of thing that prophet can do for you? Nothing. And that's why that people really need to rush to Jesus. To Jesus of the gospel. He is the savior. He came to finish everything. He is the God in human flesh. He is the revelation of God. Who can save you from Satan? You see, Satan is the second most powerful spiritual being in the world after God. Yes, that's true. Man is not more powerful than Satan. Only God is powerful. Now, if God cannot save you, who can save you? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody yes. So God must reveal himself. And that's only written in the gospel. God revealed himself in Jesus to us. That's why his name is called Jesus, Savior. The anointed one to come and save us. He is not a prophet. He is the Savior. Koran doesn't have it. So Koran is not... Answer to the salvation. Calling Jesus a prophet is not an answer to salvation. Or Muhammad is not an answer to salvation. This is what we need to think really. That's why Muslims need always to ask a question. I am, I am following Islam. Why? What can Islam do for me? Islam is going to save me? Oh no, no. Your good deeds when outweigh your bad deeds, you'll be saved. You'll, you may be saved. You know, this is logically, doctrinally, philosophically wrong. If you're a sinner, can you do a good deed in order to please God? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. You see, God is not waiting for your work. He's the God of heart. Yes. He wants you. You see, I haven't seen my mother for 23 years. One day I said to my mother, look, mother, I'm a good boy now. You should not cry, mother. She said, son, what are you talking about? 
I don't need your goodness. I just need you to hug your son, my son. Wow. That's my God. Yeah. God says, I don't need your work. I need you first to be with me and then do good deeds. That's right. That's right. In exactly. Islam, you do good deeds. Good deeds is not most important than being with God. That's in the Bible. That really give you joy. Wow, God is ready to save me. Jesus came to save me and you give your heart to him. That's right. Thank you once again. I mean, I, I really want this episode to continue on. I'm really enjoying this. Thank you once again, Daniel. It's a very pleasure for me. Thank you. You've heard Daniel say, and it's so important, is that you will only have so much information if you do read the Quran, but you need to go to the Gospels. If you want the full picture of Jesus, if you want to discover who Jesus really is, you need to read the Gospel. So I hope that that will challenge you to be able to look at these things in a very level-headed manner and discover and look for yourself and see and ask God whether Jesus really is Saviour. We have discovered Him to be and we hope that He will be the Saviour of your life. So please stay in tune for the very next episode of Worlds Apart. And until then, may God bless you.